In this presentation, we will start to investigate the topic of half-range Fourier series. To get the most from this presentation, it would be a good idea if you have already viewed the screencasts on odd and even functions and fully understood them. There are three of those altogether. Sometimes we find ourselves in the situation of having a function f of t defined only over a small interval of the real line. In this example I've chosen a simple linear function f of t equals 2 plus t with the domain only the interval from 0 to 1 for t. I've drawn a graph of this function. Outside the interval 0 to 1 the function does not exist. We don't care what happens there. We only care about it between 0 and 1. Now it might be that we require a Fourier series for this function. We call it a Fourier series is a sum involving sines and cosines whose graph, if we take sufficient members of the series, closely matches the graph of the original function. If we find such a Fourier series and plot it between 0 and 1, it should look like the function f of t equals 2 plus t. But of course, sines and cosines are periodic functions defined over the whole of the real line. So if we do find such a Fourier series, it should match our function f of t, but it will also continue outside the domain 0 to 1. We really don't care what happens outside the domain. All we care about is inside. But the Fourier series will have an existence outside the domain. And we can use that fact to give ourselves a very convenient choice of the type of Fourier series we use to model f of t. Let's start to think about how this might work. Now remember, a Fourier series is periodic. So whatever it does outside the domain, it's likely to be repeating the same shape over and over again. For simplicity, let's just take the line of least resistance and suppose that it keeps on repeating our straight line. I've drawn that situation on the next page. I simply repeat the shape 2 plus t over and over again indefinitely to the right and the left. This function is now defined as f of t equals 2 plus t between 0 and 1, but to say that it repeats itself we, we use the notation f of t plus 1 equals f of t. This is telling us that the period is 1, and when we come to do the Fourier series, remember there's a frequency variable there called omega, which is 2 pi over p and so omega will be 2 pi. Our Fourier series, when we get it, will match our f of t between 0 and 1, but then it will look like this function that I've drawn when we go outside the domain. Notice something about this function. It doesn't have any obvious symmetry. It's certainly not an even function. It doesn't reflect into itself about the vertical axis. Nor is it odd. It doesn't rotate into itself by 180 degrees about the origin. It has no symmetry at all of that kind. When we come to find a Fourier series for this function, we will find a full range Fourier series. Just the ones that we're familiar with up to now. A constant term and then a sum of cosines and sines using the omega value 2 pi. This is known as a full-range Fourier series. The ANs and BNs will have to be calculated by the usual method of finding certain integrals, but we'll deal with that problem in a separate presentation. Of course, to find this Fourier series, we will have three bits of work to do. We'll have to do an integral to find A0, another to find AN, and another to find the BNs. That can be a significant amount of work. It would be really nice if we had a way of cutting that work in half. Well, here's how we do it. Remember, all we care about is that the Fourier series looks like f of t between 0 and 1. We don't care what it looks like outside that domain. So, we take our f of t and we extend it in a different way. In this extension, I've drawn f of t by reflecting the original graph across the vertical axis and then 
repeated it periodically. Notice that this is now an even function. We call it the even extension of f of t. Furthermore, by doing this, I've changed the period. The period is now 2. And so our omega variable will be 2 pi over 2, so it will change to pi. We would also need to write another rule for the function between negative 1 and 0. In fact, between negative 1 and 0, f of t is actually 2 minus t. In principle, that could make extra work when we come to do the integrals. But later on, we will see that, in fact, we can sidestep that problem. Thinking a bit more about this function, it is even. There is no way that an even function can, can have a Fourier series containing odd terms. As soon as there is an odd term added in, it would mess up the symmetry. We can therefore conclude quite safely that if we were to calculate the bn's, that is, the coefficients of the sine, all the bn's have to be zero. Why is that? Well, sine is an odd function. The f of t that we have here cannot possibly contain odd functions in its Fourier series because it is an even function. There are no signs, so the bn's must all be zero. That means that we only have to find an's. The function f of t will have the form a half a zero plus the sum n equals zero to infinity a n cos n pi t. Notice now pi but not 2 pi. This has reduced the amount of work we have to do to find coefficients. Furthermore, it's expressed f of t entirely in terms of cosines. It is called a half range cosine series. In the context of a real engineering or scientific application, it might also be that it's convenient to have cosines for some reason or other. Well, that's our first half-range series formed from cosines. Probably you can guess that the other type of series will be formed from sines. Now, sine is an odd function, so in this case we need to make an odd extension of our f of t. I've drawn that here. Notice f of t is still 2 plus t between 0 and 1. That's all we really care about. But I've now drawn it in such a way that when you rotate it about the origin, it rotates into itself. That's made a period of 2, and so I've extended the function using period 2. Once again, the omega will be equal to pi, and we should note here f of t plus 2 is f of t. This is an odd extension. An odd function cannot possibly contain even functions in its Fourier series. So the Fourier series for this new function will contain no cosines and not even a constant, because remember a constant is also even. This one will contain only sines. On the next page I've written the form that the Fourier series will take. Notice here all we have to find is bn's. The an's are necessarily zero including the a zero. Finding only bn's will mean we only have to do one integral instead of three. Certainly a lot less work than finding the full range series and a little less even than finding the even series. In a later presentation we will discuss the technical details of how we go about doing the integrals and how there are some shortcuts we can take using the symmetry. I think that's enough for this particular presentation though.